Hey YouTube, got another uh, winter camping video I wanted to do. I've got a new sleep system and I decided to throw this up. It's a time lapse of me pulling into camp and getting everything set up. I figured it'd be more interesting than just watching the Blue Ox logo. But uh, I had some recommendations on a new sleep system. And I wanted to give it a try. It worked out pretty good. Uh, this was a this was a fantastic four day weekend that I had, and uh, we got some you know medium temperatures. It wasn't super cold, but uh, it was a good chance to get out there and uh, camp and test out the new system. I had some other gear that I wanted to test. I'll have an upcoming video on some of that stuff. New new camp stove and a camp oven and odds and ends of things. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this video. If you uh, do, give me a like, a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good happy stuff. And we'll get on with the uh, review of the new gear in my basement before we actually head out and, and do the camp video. So hey YouTube. Uh, my winter camping considerations video got quite a few views, and uh, fortunately for me, I got quite a few good conversations going, which I, I really enjoy that aspect of uh, YouTube. So one lady reached out to me. She's doing some car camping across Europe and wondered about a cot. Now, I've got very little experience with a cot, haven't used one in many, many years. I've never used one for winter camping, so it kind of brought up some interesting concepts. And... Um, Another gentleman that watched the video reached out, and he does use a, a, a cot for camping. He's got a pretty good setup. He also mentioned using uh, one of these MSR footprints, which is a 92 by 92, to actually put over top of my gazelle tent to kind of close off the vents and, and kind of reduce the, the heat loss, or really more importantly, the wind coming in. So I went ahead and picked one of those up. I was going to try it, but I also picked up a, uh, a cot and a different mattress to use with the cot. My existing mattress is a little too thick and wobbly, I think, to, to put on a cot. So this is my old setup, which uh, was in the original winter camping considerations video. So it's got the, the Coleman air mattress, very thick with padded top, which I really do like. And then my Wiggy sleeping bag with the outer covering. So this is a, uh, a Wiggy's tool bag with um, the 20 degree bag plus the outer covering which drops it to a negative 60 degree bag and um, I haven't used the outer covering at all except for a standalone bag it's it's a nice uh, you know kind of 30 degree bag it's all synthetic so many years ago I picked up the the wiggies and it was just too large bulky and heavy to backpack with so I wound up buying some enlightened equipment bags. So these are quilts that are in this blue sack. The sack itself did not come with it. That's a Kuban fiber bag. It's uh, pretty waterproof, so it prevents water from getting in and soaking down, which is an issue. Plus the, the quilts themselves have water resistant down. But there's two quilts in there. One is a 10 degree quilt and the other is a 40 degree quilt. But combined together, they have a rating of negative 20 which is a pretty good rating and I kind of prefer the option now there's some price differences here and I'll kind of go over that but I decided to go ahead and try this cot and I'm heading out where unfortunately I'm not getting as cold weather as I wanted to but uh, we're gonna get down into the uh, mid to low 20s and uh, daytime temperatures in the mid 30s and I wanted to get back out and camp on the property but I wanted to do this quick video here in my basement so that you guys could uh, see a little bit better. It's a little better lighting here. And then I got this Airlax pad, which is built as a four inch pad. By my measurement, it's more like a three, maybe three and a half if you stretched it. But uh, it's one of the self-inflating pads with foam inside, then you add air. And it's got a monstrous R rating, which I'll talk about uh, once I'm out uh, camping. But it's, it's kind of a nice pad. I, I really do like it. It's got some interesting features. And then I picked up this uh, Timber Ridge Magnum XL heavy duty cot that's in the, the olive drab camel bag. And um, it's nice. There are a lot of cot options out there. I don't particularly have a, a, a favorite by any stretch. I did a lot of research on them, but this one seemed to meet the needs and it's pretty sturdy when it's set up. And, I, and I'll show you that once I get up camping. But so the, the problem with this system here, as you see it, is it's got very expensive quilts. So each one of the quilts in there is $375. And uh, they're phenomenal quilts. I They've got some great systems to latch them together. 
so that they don't move around. And I'll kind of show you that once I get it out and get it set up. But um, are they worth it? The the Wiggies bag here, both both bags run 275. So obviously you've got a lot more investment with the uh, quilt. Some people like them, some people don't. I tend to like them better. Uh, the lightweight down is easier when you're sleeping. I think you don't have that weight on top of you. Some people probably like that weight. Um, it's just an interesting setup in general. Um, the problem, aside from cost, is size and weight. Now, it's not a huge size difference between the two setups, I guess. Uh, but the cot comes in at a hefty 33.6 pounds. So this entire setup, just so you know, is only 16 pounds. Uh, the air mattress is 11 pounds and the Wiggy sleeping bag setup is five pounds. So a pretty, pretty lightweight, not compact solution, but uh, it, it works really well and obviously a lot less money. So if you're looking at, at this, your total outlay here is $382. Uh, $127 ish for the for the air mattress and $255 ish for the uh, for the sleeping bag. Um, I think those are pretty much today prices. I had gone out and looked, I don't think things have changed a whole lot. But for this setup, it's a hundred dollars for the cot, it's a hundred dollars for the air mattress, and it's um like I said, $375 a piece for for both of these uh, quilts, which comes in at a whopping $750 just for the quilts. Um, obviously, most people are not going to go that option. So you've got a total of $950 represented here where you're only at $382 over here. So cost is a, a big thing, weight's a big thing. But when you're car camping and you find something that works for you that you really like, if you're willing to spend the money on it, I think this is gonna be a good solution. So I'm gonna get it out and I'm gonna set it up uh, camping tomorrow and I'll go over all the specifics and show you how it sets up but I wanted to do this kind of comparison video really quick so that, that you could see it all right so we're on the property it's gonna be a great weekend highs in the mid 30s uh, lows in the low 20s it's a four-day weekend for me so uh, we got uh, all of our camp stuff organized and now we're going to uh, put up the new cotton air mattress setup and uh, see how that goes. So this is the new cot. Comes in this uh, very sturdy canvas bag. I wouldn't say it's probably waterproof, but it's probably pretty water resistant, which is good because the last thing you want is your cot surface wet. Although with the air mattress on top, it's not that big of a deal. So. Uh, Pretty easy setup, so you've got some Velcro ties that remain attached to the, the cot itself, and then the whole thing just folds outward. Standard uh, cot style, nothing new or crazy, complicated, anything like that. It does have these these plastic feet which are good because they're broad and they're not sharp so I'm not too worried about it damaging the footprint of the tent and you just pop it out so as you can see I've got uh, plenty of room for the gazelle t4 on both sides of the cot so I think it'll uh, it'll work really well. So then, you gotta put the cross braces in. You thread one on each side through the material. There's a loop here. It's not easy to do with gloves on, I guess. Once you thread it through, there's some notches that go over pegs on both ends. Make sure it's taut and you just snap it down. And then you repeat on the other side.
So once you have your to the last pole, you snap that side in. This side is a little bit tight and you've got to kind of stretch the, uh, the material out here to get over the edge. And there it goes. So now it's nice and taut. It's got a little wiggle from end to end, but it's very sturdy from side to side. So there are some additional catches here that help some. And you just flip that over. And then you repeat it on the other side. So as you can see, I've got a little room on all the, the sides. I'm not touching the, the walls of the tent at all. And uh, it's pretty sturdy. So pretty happy with this, uh, this cot for $100. Uh, not a bad uh, investment. So let's get the air pad out. So this is the Airlax pad for $100. And I think compared to some of the options that I looked at, this is pretty good. I don't really see any flaws in it. Now, long-term usage, maybe it's not made quite as well. But some of the pads that I looked at were upwards of $300. And I just don't see the need to spend $300 for one of these self-inflating pads. As I said, it is self-inflating. So, you've got this valve here. And this valve is currently set to where it will not take in air. And then if you rotate it to the side, that's massive airflow going in. As you can see, it's kind of self-inflating. And then once you inflate it with air, you turn it the other way. Now you can put air into it with uh, the bag or a pump, but it won't let the air out. Let's go ahead and let it self-inflate. So it will not entirely self-inflate, but do a pretty good job and every time I use it it seems to do a little bit better uh, I'm not sure if the the cold will have any effect so we'll see all right so it inflated somewhat it doesn't really need that much air um, but you know you can adjust it to your comfort level there is foam inside of it so it's it's cushiony to a certain extent and uh, I don't think you can see the layers of foam there so you just add as much air and I I tend to like it a uh, pretty firm mattress but we'll see now hold on I want to show you the bag first So you've got this bag that the mattress comes in, which is pretty nice. It's kind of a dry bag type format where the top rolls and then buckles. Uh, I would say once again, this is probably water resistant, but definitely not waterproof. But uh, I think it's good enough. The pad is a soft material, but it's kind of got a little bit of resistant finish. So I don't think it'll get really dirty. And although it might get damp, I don't think it would absorb water too badly. But uh, let's show you the other use for this bag so I like this kind of stuff when I hike I've got an airbag that works very similar to this it's obviously a small lightweight it's got this little piece on the end this little tab and once you get a mattress you turn the valve to 
let air in but not out and then you just snap that in there and then take the bag and you fluff it around you capture the air you close it off and then you can pump air into it now with the large Coleman mattress that I typically bring out it would take a long time to pump that up but with this you can do just probably six to eight of these bags and it's going to it quite well as a matter of fact I think that was just three or four and it's already pretty firm so you can see yeah it's good and firm so then you just pop that loose and because of that one-way valve the air won't come out of it and then you just screw that down now I've also as I've shown before I have this and you can use this on this valve to pump it up if if you need to but uh, I don't really need it with this bag and it's pretty pretty easy and handy to use all right so that's the Airlax mattress as I said before this thing builds at a four inch I would call that a three maybe a three and a half but there you go um it doesn't really matter to be honest with you because it's comfortable um these buckles or these straps that you see are not part of the mattress system those are actually for my uh enlightened equipment quilts which i'll show you now so These are my two Enlightened Equipment quilts. Absolutely adore these things. The black one, these are these are custom colors that I ordered. They've got some stock colors, the stuff that's in stock, and you can go to enlightenedequipment.com and check those out. Or you can order the custom, you just have to wait a little bit longer. And you can pick and choose your fill weight, whether or not you want the waterproof down or water resistant down is probably a better term, and all those good things. So these, these sleeping bags, or these quilts rather, they operate as a standard quilt if you unbuckle them. But you can zipper this up and then draw the drawstring and you've got a foot box. So it's going to be a little bit warmer. Pull it out and now it's going to operate as a standard quilt. So this orange lined uh, sleeping bag is a 30 degree or a 40 degree quilt sorry and the green one is a 10 degree quilt but as i said when you layer them together and you can find the uh, information on enlightened equipment's website as far as how you layer these and what temperature rating you get for this particular setup a 10 degree and a 40 degree will take it to a negative 20. so that's pretty good pretty good rating now as I said, these are a lot more pricey than the Wiggy's synthetic bag, and there's pros and cons to each. Uh, you'll have to decide for yourself what you like, what your budget can handle, all those good things. I tend to like the down because when it gets cooler, I don't seem to get as warm with the synthetic, and the synthetic is, is heavy, so you have a heavy weight on you, and I'm not big on that. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, these are light, airy. They do a great job of keeping me warm pretty much no matter what. Now, I don't need both of them tonight. As I said, the weather's not going to get that cold. We're going to get in the low 20s tonight, all that around 22, 21 degrees. So uh, this one is more than warm enough. Uh, both of them will probably be a little bit warm, but I do want to show you how to set these up and how to layer them. So as I said, these straps were purchased on their website. Very inexpensive. And as you see, there's two on each end, if you will. So the difference is this one is what you standard use which has got a single small clip to it and then it's got two little buckles that come off of it this one just has the two end buckles so the difference being for this one without this adapter or with the adapter for that matter you just attach one bag or use the adapter and attach two bags to it with this one you attach each bag layered together uh, now this one is 
nice because it gives you some flexibility. I think this is better because it allows you to use this snap to basically make the bags one and then you uh, go from there. So let me show you how that works. So you, you get the you get the bag and you use the female clip on the male clip and this actually will hold this bag down to the, the cushion it'll allow the uh, it won't allow rather the air to travel through it and then you take this one and you connect it to the other buckle and you do that on both ends here and then on both sides and what that does is it allows you to keep that bag kind of locked in place now what you can do is then unbuckle from this side and now you can kind of roll the bags back you can get in bed and then you can just pull this back and clip one time but the bags stay clipped together which is why i like this particular system a little bit better so let me go ahead and finish setting this up So oh, there we go. This is the this is the basic sleep system. So as you can see, I've got this unclipped right now, but the two bags are clipped together. So they operate as one. So when you get in to the bag, you just take the one clip and clip it to one of these, and then it'll hold it in. And then you can adjust these. You see, this one's further in, and these are further out, so that the bag's trapped underneath you, and it stops the drafts from coming in which is one of the downsides to quilt so you have to have some type of system like this to to prevent that now the bag itself has a strap and those clips can be clipped to them own selves on either side of the bag so you can go from here to here and then it'll keep it underneath of you i don't particularly like that method but it does work um i just think this is a this is a better setup so now one of the things that uh intrigued me when i start thinking about the cot system is that it sits up so as you know you've seen my video with the cold mattress cold mattress sits up this high what happens is i get in here in the morning and i'm trying to get my boots on my pants on and everything else and i'm sitting on that air mattress well that air mattress because it sits up that high doesn't really keep you up that high because when you sit on it the air pushes out and you basically sit right on the ground so it's trying to sit on the ground and i'm not i'm not young and i'm not thin so it's not all that easy for me to uh to do that it's a little bit of a balancing act one of the things that appeals to me about this system is i've got the ability to sit and now i can comfortably get dressed undress get my shoes on what have you and it's going to be a lot more comfortable setup so that's my that's my new sleep system we're going to try this out and i'll probably be out here for three days so we'll see how it goes so another setup that i like to use especially when i'm hiking with the quilt and if you've got a air mattress that like this has a little bit of a, a fabric to it you don't want to get it dirty sweaty whatever so this can also cut down on the drafts a little bit it's a silk sock so basically you just pull it on stick your feet in it pull it up to your chin and then you get into the the bag and then you know this acts kind of as a sheet so if you're sweating or if you're a little bit dirty uh, it's going to get on this which can easily be washed uh the quilts can be washed but not, not as easily right especially with down you got to do it a special way and then there's also this which comes in really handy hold on So this is the Sea to Summit Thermal Light Reactor Extreme. It's not all that extreme. I think they claim uh, 
20 to 30 degree extra protection, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I, I think probably you might get, you might get 10 out of it. I don't know, but what it is, it's more of a soft shell. It's kind of a, a heavy t-shirt material, if you will, but it's really the same thing. So what you do is you stick your feet in it and then you pull that up to your chin and then it's got a drawstring on the top of it so you can kind of collapse it in around your shoulders and then as you're laying in the bed you're going to have that against the the well the quilt as well right so it's protecting the quilt and the air mattress from dirt sweat and everything else and then i mentioned in my in my previous winter camping considerations video with quilts you don't have the the mummy style hood that comes out that can be pulled up around your your head and your ears so my head will just be laying on that pillow so that is one important consideration when you're doing quilts and i have a number of different styles of hood that can be worn so this one i think i showed before it's got a little bit of mesh that goes over the nose and it can come down over top of your face pretty good and give pretty much full coverage and then i just picked this up fairly cheap on uh on Amazon I haven't tried this yet but it's got a little bit of synthetic uh, fur inside so it'd be comfortable and then you just pull it over your head and you tighten that up on your on your face and that should work pretty well uh, and then I've got a couple of I got a couple other ones here that uh, varying levels of warmness and of course just a just a regular hat is also good for warmth on your head so like I said I don't think it's gonna be super cold tonight but without any covering whatsoever on my head and my ears my ears might get a little bit cold my nose might get a little bit cold you might be tempted to pull the sleeping bag up over your face and then as i mentioned before you're going to get condensation and the bag's going to get wet and especially with down that's a bad thing so down when it gets damp loses its insulation value so that will uh whichever one i choose to wear tonight depending on how the temperature goes that'll be fine so one of the challenges tonight is going to be the wind so the wind is not too bad right now but it's been picking up and gusting i'd say we're getting uh anywhere from 11 to 15 mile an hour winds on and off you see right now it's pretty light the the privacy tent is just flapping a little tiny bit but when i was trying to put that up the wind was blowing pretty hard i had a hard time getting it set up i had to drive a couple of the stakes in quickly so that i could get it held and then pop it out in the wind and the reason that i brought the privacy tent this time because normally i'm out here by myself i don't really need the privacy but uh it's a windbreak so i'm going to put my little uh bag toilet in there and if i have to use the uh the restroom to do my business i'm not going uh bare butt in the in the cold wind so it should be a little bit on the breezy side wind chills i would imagine will be hoover around uh, zero tonight so another thing that uh one of my viewers mentioned to me is he took this msr footprint it's 92 by 92 and layered it underneath of the rainfly, and that covers up this screen mesh you see and you can see it there that allows air to flow through in the summertime that's obviously very important especially if it's raining because the airflow coming through will uh, ventilate and get rid of the most of the condensation but uh in, in winter camping that's not as nice and of course you're going to get some winds tonight and the wind is going to come up underneath that rain fly and come through and dissipate the warmth in the tent not that the tent's going to give you that much warmth but this is a pretty sturdy tent and if i close it all up i should get some pretty decent warmth so let me take the rain fly off and we'll test this out never tried it before so okay so that's nice so this little bag is attached to it so it uh it stays all in one place that's kind of nice so when you get done you can just tighten that up uh, and wrap it into its little bag and then you don't have to worry about where the bag went all right 
so this should be interesting in the breeze. I'm not going to completely take the, uh, the rain fly off. I think I can get this in underneath of it without having to take it completely off because with the wind, it's not going to be very cooperative. Now, as you see, I went corner to the front and connected it to this peg, which is also used to secure the, the rain fly. And because it goes opposite, well, I don't know opposite, but versus putting it corner to corner, put corner to side, you can see it covered those vents really, really well. And it's pretty secure. Matter of fact, it may be a little tight. I may have to loosen that up a bit once I pop the top up. So let's, uh, let's see how that goes. Yeah, now as you can see, that is really taunt. That does an excellent job. really good and tight. All right, that's that's pretty good. And I was a little bit worried if it was loose that the wind would make it flap in the night. Not that this isn't going to flap anyways, but that is pretty tight in there. And I don't think that's going to be an issue. So uh, good on the viewer who clued me into that. That's uh, a really good setup. It should provide a little extra insulation, if you will, but definitely a lot less air currents coming in underneath the rain fly in the night. So kind of a surprise. Uh, we weren't expecting snow, but uh, it snowed a little bit during the night, maybe quarter inch. And uh, it was uh, very windy last night. So it was actually a really good test of the tent with the new uh, footprint set up where I put this footprint down underneath so I did not get it was blowing snow and I could hear the snow in the trees and against the tent all night long it was blowing pretty hard and uh, I didn't get any crystals come up underneath I didn't feel any breezes at all so that is a, a great system that works really well I was pretty pleased with that overall so yeah so a little unexpected early morning snow shoveling to get uh, ready to make my coffee. It didn't get that cold. It got to 29 degrees and let's see here. put the water in the coffee pot just in case. But uh, as you can see, there's very little ice in there. So uh, won't take too much on the on the new stove to get that uh, that melted up. So all right, let's get to the coffee. So I brushed the snow off everything and heated up my water. I used my AeroPress coffee maker and I got coffee. Got the fire lit, brushed the snow off my seat and got my coffee mug over there. So it, uh, it actually got down to 26 last night. I checked my uh, sensor push and the graph shows that it got down to 26, but it had already risen to 29 as of 6 a.m. this morning but the temperature is only going to go up to about 34 today as a high it's going to stay cloudy or it's hard to tell the weather forecast but uh, between one and three it's going to be cloudy and then after three it's going to be sunny of course soon after that the sun sets so i don't think it really matters much but i don't think a whole lot of this will uh, melt off at, the, at those temperatures and i think we're still supposed to have this uh 
10 to 15 mile an hour breezes I put up this little windbreak here last night just to kind of block the the wind from the back of my my head when I sat at the fire because the fires come or the winds coming in from uh, that direction so <clears throat> it uh, it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be an interesting morning still got a lot of stuff got to get done So this is a drone shot of the uh, camping spot on my property. It's in between two ravines. I, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to show this. It was really pretty with the uh, snow on the ground. It gives a good view of my, uh, my campsite. All right, so we got the first night on the new sleep system in the books. So it uh, got down 26 degrees according to my sensor push data. Um, by the time I got up at six, it was already up around 28, 29 degrees, but, uh, it did get cold. This system worked great. I love being able to sit down on the edge to get dressed in the morning. Um, the, using the quilts, I, I really do like these feather quilts. I gotta tell you, they're expensive, but in my opinion, they're worth it. Very lightweight, but very, very warm, very comfortable. I actually did use both during the night and I used the the sock and I never got overly warm but I was definitely warm I had no problems now as I mentioned you've got uh, no hood on a on a quilt like you do with a, a mummy bag but uh, I used the, uh, the face mask and I probably made a mistake not having the other one easily available I did not feel like getting up out of the out of the rack to uh, find the, the stuff in all this all this mess so I just, I used this, I got a little overheated. Just, just for your information, I sleep rather cold. So the cold doesn't bother me. If I get a little bit too warm, I get a little freaked out. So, you know, your mileage may vary. You probably sleep differently. So just keep that in mind. But this was great. If it had been in single digits, this would have been fantastic. But I did get a little overheated on my head. So I took it off in the night and just stuffed it down in the bag with me. And then I started getting my ears, started getting a little cold. So I put it back on. I kept it on for, I don't know, a couple hours. Maybe I woke up. I was starting to get too overly warm. So I took it back off and it was a constant cycle through the night. So, but um, I should have had, I've got thinner ones that uh, would have worked a lot better. But uh, not, not to say better, this worked great if it's cold enough, but it was a little overly warm. So, but anyways, the sleep system worked great. And I talked yesterday to set this up. I've got the the footprint that's set up inside of here covering these. As you can see, it's not 100% coverage, but it does a really good job. And it worked great. So we got snow unexpectedly during the night. And uh, the wind was still blowing pretty good, 11 to 15 miles an hour all night long. And uh, as you can see, there's still snow on the top of the, the tent. But no snow blew up underneath here and got inside the tent, which was a great test. And I didn't feel any breezes that were coming through. And normally, you always have that. You, if you look here in the window casing, there's, there's snow back in there. That shows you how much the, the wind was blowing. But yet nothing, the wind or the snow blew up underneath here and came in through those screens. Uh, so that was a great uh, trick. I'm, I'm fantastic uh, hint by one of my viewers. I really appreciate it. That's going to work really well for winter camping from now on. I was kind of afraid that maybe I wouldn't be able to uh, to use this tent for winter camping, but uh, well, I thought I wouldn't be able to use it. It just wouldn't be as comfortable, but now I, I don't have any issues. I'm not going to wind up with snow inside my, my tent at night. So, uh, so far so good. We've got uh, another couple of nights out. It's going to get uh, much colder. Well, not much colder. It's going to get down to about uh, 21, 22 degrees tonight. And today it's only going to get up to about 34 degrees. So uh, it's going to be a great weekend. All right. So end to a, a really good weekend. And uh, the sleep system worked out really well. So the uh, wind picked back up pretty badly last night and <clears throat> I didn't notice any issues whatsoever with breezes coming through. But 
that also creates the other issue that you deal with in a winter because you get condensation so you could see the ice crystals forming the tops of the sleeping bags were all <coughs> slightly damp and you can see the ice crystals here all inside the tent so now normally what i would do is i would wait to pack up camp until the sun comes out although it's not going to get all that warm today but the tent being a darker color would probably thaw if you will pretty quickly but the um, bottom line is i got to get packed up and get out of here uh, i got a long drive home so uh but aside from that everything worked well the the cot very comfortable easy to sleep on i like being up off the ground having a place to put my my butt and my my feet up on when i put my shoes on in the morning is fantastic the quilt system with the layered straps that worked really well just across the board i did use that again last night because that hood i thought maybe it would uh it was going to be a little bit colder because it got down to 21 degrees last night but uh it was still a little warm for me and that's just me i i sleep kind of cold because after i took it off i uh didn't uh have anything on my head and i did just fine so not not an issue um but yeah so great trip it was a little uh a little frosty getting out of bed this morning and then i had the uh The hitch didn't want to open up so i couldn't get to the end of the back that's one of the problems with this expedition one uh dual swing bumper if these latches don't latch properly it uh causes it to, to stay locked into the bumper and then you can't let down the tailgate and get in and it pretty much covers the entire back of the the bed so it's it pretty much eliminates any access whatsoever so i actually had to crawl up underneath and uh Pry the mechanism loose out of this bracket here so that was that was kind of fun good way to spend your morning i guess uh, i'm doing a cold camp today i don't want to get the fire going or this morning rather i don't want to get the fire going because i've got uh i gotta leave out of here and i don't want to leave any embers so I, i'm just gonna leave it it cold i always leave it covered anyways but the uh at night i always cover it up but uh yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with all that. I was gonna make coffee this morning. My uh, my water did freeze. You can see here the ice that was in the container, but it wasn't solid. I was able to turn the stove on just for a little bit, just to kind of loosen it up a bit and then get rid of the water. I decided that uh, I'll just wait till I uh, hit the road to get some coffee. So, all right, all there is to do now is just pick up camp. So I found something interesting. So I always take a, a water in the tent with me, seal it up, and I just had it sitting on the floor upright like that. And uh, it didn't freeze yet. This one was sitting in the cup holder of my chair and it's solid frozen. So evidently, now this cold water, don't get me wrong, but it's not frozen. So it's interesting. I think next time I come out, I'll bring my additional sensor push and keep it in the tent with me so i can compare the temperature inside the tent versus outside the tent just an interesting note show you the breakdown i apologize if the gopro gives out it doesn't like the cold very much so and unfortunately i've got a mess in my tent and i forgot my little whisk broom and dustpan so when i get home i'm gonna have to put this tent up and uh take care of all that mess um so i wanted to show you I showed you how easy it was to uh, inflate this thing. It's still got a lot of air in it, even with the cold. A lot of times, uh, temperature changes can affect the uh, the air pressure, but it was comfortable to sleep on. Uh, the combination of the, the cot and this uh, self-inflating pad were phenomenal. Now, the inflating pad is a little bit more difficult to roll up and get all the air out than a normal pad normal pad the difficulty is usually pumping it up well with this it's different right so spin this around there's not a lot of room in here strange with a four-person tent but now when i open it up it's uh set to take air in but not let air out so you gotta spin that valve if you spin it around this way make sure it locks in place yeah all 
All right, it's locked in place. Now, as you roll it up, it'll push air past this one-way valve, but it won't allow air to come back in. Keep in mind, there's all that foam in there. You can hear the air coming out of it. I find once you get it all rolled up, I think it's a little, a little more difficult right now to roll it because of the cold. It's more difficult than the cold, it seems. But once you get it rolled up, you put your body weight on it like that, it really helps get the air out. Once again, that one-way valve stops the air from coming back in. Basically rolled up. Get on that, put my body weight on it. And then once you have no more air coming out, you just put the cap on it. And that's it. Then you put it in its bag. And uh as I said, this is a really nice bag, well thought out. It has the, uh, like a wire insert on both of these sides and it keeps it open when you're scooping that air so that you can uh, scoop air easily. And then when you go to close it, it does like a standard dry bag style. There's a clip at both ends, but it keeps it nice and open. You can grab those wire rings, if you will, around that outer lip and help pull on it. Because of the cold, I don't work very well in the cold either. Uh, I probably didn't roll it as tight as I could have. Usually it goes in there pretty easy, but it still goes in there pretty good. There's wires. Those wires make it really nice because you can really get a hold of them. Normally with just a, just a bag, it's slippery and your hands will slip off. So then you just take it. Twist it. Then your clips around. And there you go. That's complete. Now we'll... Uh, break down the cot so one of the things I did notice I've set this up a couple of times at home make sure I understand it make sure I had it all done correctly it works real well sitting in my my office because I've got more space as you can tell it's a little tight up on the, the ends and the, the corners and being able to flip this thing around and film it is not all that easy. I can get the camera to stay flat. So I found if you do it toward the middle of the room, it works really well. You've got those little braces.
the other side when uh, I was doing this at home I would just walk to the other side of it and flip it on its other side but here it's a little bit more difficult but very doable all right so once you've uh, you've got those braces off then you take off your uh, any pieces again it's not as easy to do so you pop the end piece off and pull it out of its sleeve on its own. The ends swing outward like that and then this piece will go down and then this end swings outward and that's probably the only thing that's really all that awkward inside the tent is when you're swinging those ends around it's a little tight but as you can see it's very doable. It's a very nice system and I think pretty much all cots work that way but uh, for a hundred dollars for the cot let me just put the velcro straps back on a hundred dollars for the cot and another hundred dollars for the uh, self-inflating pad I feel like it's a it's a bargain it uh, worked out really well now I was kind of curious as to whether it would work well in the uh, in the winter. Oh, I just realized. Ugh. So, not a great harness system, but this was underneath the uh, the case for the cot. This is the strap system for that uh, self-inflating mattress. So that's why I had a little bit of trouble getting it into the bag because normally I wrap this around it and cinch it down real tight, but uh, I totally forgot about it. All right, so with the uh, with the cot, though, I wonder if uh, wondered if this would work well for winter camping. Um, just the concept of having the cold air underneath you, but the R value of that sleeping pad is so great that it really wasn't an issue. So now I'm curious: will that be a good summer system because I would think being up off the ground with air circulating under you with uh, just a, a light bag you're going to be cooler and that's usually my problem I actually like camp winter camping much better than I like summer camping because I don't like the heat but heavy canvas very sturdy and there it is so the reason I I like the sturdy bag I mean I guess you always want some good quality stuff but I throw this I just throw it in the back of the uh, jeep and uh sitting in the bed you know it doesn't it protects that uh cot from getting too banged up so all right so another indication of how much warmer it is in the tent than it is outside the tent so the ground outside of the tent is all frozen but it's all thawed underneath the tent so yeah i find that interesting like i said i'll bring out my sensor push next time my other one and have one in the tent with me and one outside the tent so i can compare the different temperatures very interesting but the the additional ground cloth over top of the the vents in the tent although it did cause some condensation and in this corner so i was sleeping with my head here so in this corner the rain fly 
had some uh, ice crystals where some of my uh, condensation from my breath was uh, was coming out that one corner. I didn't see it on any other corner, just this corner where my head was. So, yeah, very interesting. So I showed you the rope roller and the, the cam roller before, or the roller cam, sorry. And, uh, but I didn't show how I last the tent down. So the tent's got this great heavy duty canvas bag and it has these heavy duty nylon sewn in straps to Velcro so you can kind of tighten it down and make it a little bit more compact size. So I just take the little carabiners and clip them in there, clip it to the loop, wrap that around and it's wrapped around this top piece of the rack. And then I've got the other one over here. So then once you get this secured the way you want it, put it in through there, across the roller. And then you just tighten that down as much as you need to. And then you just tighten it down as, as hard as you can pull it. It's good and that won't do anything until you release that and then it comes loose really easy but so far these these have worked out really well for me let's climb over here on the side and i'll show you i've got the rope roller lashed around and then i just thread it through the, the handle a little bit so that it can provide additional catch if something gives way and then it's the same thing, you just pull that down. Now, I don't like to have the loose ends flying around behind me like tin cans from a car. Somebody just got married, so I always lash these guys down. Then this one, I actually have done the, uh, the regular loop. So I don't want it too compressed, uh, or too small rather, because I don't want the the edge even though this isn't a super sharp edge to break the fibers but once you once you loop it around this piece then it's not too bad so then once again I've looped it through the the ring tighten that down and then just feed it through the the end there you go so now this thing is really good and secure it will not move forward or back won't slide side to side because I don't want it to take out my uh, my radio antenna but uh, there you go that's the uh, roller cams and the rope roller in action so, great weekend in the books. I uh, had a good time. Got to test a lot of new gear. I'm going to be doing another video on some of the other gear that I took with me, which was uh, the sensor push itself, the uh, click chair, my new camp stove, uh, Omnia oven, and a Lucy light. So, I got a bunch of new gear for Christmas. And uh, if you want to see those videos, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on those. And uh, thanks for watching.